Hi, today I'll be explaining to you on how the GCP architecture looks like at a very high level. So at the topmost level, there's something called as a GCP project. So this is basically a container which contains all the resources that you would create, including cloud VPNs, VPCs and things like cloud storage and cloud functions, etc. So within this GCP project, when you create your first GCP project, you get something called as a default VPC. So the default VPC has a CIDR range of 10.0.0 slash 9 and this is basically the diff VPC that is created to you by GCP itself and it's highly recommended that if you want to create something in production that you create your own VPCs. So for here example I have created a separate VPC with a different CIDR range. There's also something called as the managed services. So managed services are services like cloud storage, cloud SQL, etc. Even things like cloud function. So these managed services are basically services whose infrastructure is controlled by Google Cloud itself. And you as a owner of this project, you have no basic control over the underlying architecture of these services. So these include things like App Engine, Cloud Function, Cloud Storage, etc. Now, if you if you want your resources within the default VPC to communicate with these managed services, then you can use functions like, uh, or should I say, utilities like Private Service Access or Serverless VPC Access. I have created separate videos on how these interactions work or look like. So please go through them. Now within your default VPC or for that matter any VPC, there are two specific objects that you should care about. The first one is the firewall. The firewall allows traffic to go within and outside the VPC. The basic firewall rule is it allows all egress traffic that is any resource that resides within your VPC can access any resource that resides outside of it. And the other one is the disallow wall ingress. What that means is that any resource trying to access the resource that resides within the default VPC will not be allowed to do so unless you change the firewall rules. The other major, major object or uh, the other major object within your default VPC is something called as a routing table. So any resource that resides within your VPC first checks with your routing table to see whether the destination IP address resides within your VPC or it resides outside it. So if it resides within the VPC itself, the next route for that particular packet should be within the default VPC or that particular VPC. And if the destination packet is not within the destination range, then it would go to the internet gateway. So here we have two virtual machines with two specific private IP addresses. If these virtual machines want to communicate with each other, they will first check the routing table. Now it will go through the first entry and it will see that, okay, the destination IP of these of, let's assume you are VM1 trying to communicate with VM2. It will check that the destination IP resides within the first CIDR range and the route would be directed within the default VPC itself and it will not go outside of it. So for virtual machines to communicate with, with each other, it just has to go through the routing table and check the destination route. Now let's take another example where your virtual machine is trying to communicate with a host outside the project and outside the VPC. It will first check the firewall rules. Now, because the firewall rules allows egress traffic, then that should be no problem at all. So the virtual machine should be able to access the outside world. The second thing it will check is the routing table. It will see that the destination IP, because it's not residing within the VPC, is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, and it will route the traffic to the internet gateway. So theoretically, the virtual machine should be able to access the host residing outside. However, because this virtual machine doesn't have any public IP address that is not allowed. So for the virtual machine to be able to communicate, you have to give a public IP address to that virtual machine. And once that is given, then 
the virtual machine is allowed to communicate with the public host. Now let's take the other instance where the public host is trying to communicate with the virtual machine. Now is that possible? It fails in the first firewall rule itself because the firewall disallows all ingress traffic. It will not be able to communicate. So to make it communicate, you have to open a few firewall ports. Now if the host is trying to communicate to a web server within VM1, then you have to open the port 80 of the firewall rules. Or if you're trying to communicate via, let's say, putty, then you have to open the particular port of 22. So once that is done, the virtual machine should be able to, or should I say the host should be able to communicate with the virtual machine. So this is how the basic architecture looks like. I will be creating separate videos to include more complex architectures. I hope this was useful to you. If you have any doubts, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Thank you.